The primary motive for joining the Crusades was religious. The end came finally when the last Christian outposts on the Levantine shore were systematically destroyed around 1291 by the Egyptian sultans to prevent any prospect of return by the crusading armies. Wealthy pilgrims and some friars who acted as guides to the holy spots trickled into the east and western sponsored coastal raids continued into the 15th century. Historians will continue to argue the merits and necessity of the Crusades and their long-term effects for some time to come. The current events of our time, both concretely and symbolically, underlined by the terrible attacks on American targets on September 11, 2001, have increased the interest in the conflicts between East and West. The Crusades are sometimes seen as a foreshadowing of the warfare between the two cultures with large cultural, economic, and religious differences. Interest in the Crusades has grown, and they are seen as quite relevant to our frightening and divisive times. Many historians of the Crusades disagree that the medieval Holy Wars cause or even resemble the contemporary divide. I shall close with quotations from Stephen Runciman, the great Crusade historian, and then from the Scottish-British uh, Enlightenment philosopher David Hume, also a respected historian. Stephen Runciman condemned the entire Crusade enterprise as one long act of intolerance in the name of God. I am leaving the final epitaph on the Crusades to Hume, who called them the most signal and durable monument to human folly that has yet appeared in any age or nation. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, just a, kind of a comment that we are, they were necessary, I think in order for us to end up where we are today, sitting in this room, having an awesome conversation. And, uh, I doubt it. I, I think maybe the a, first one was. Why would you say it would be necessary? Yeah. I would say that the that it's got to be an almost foregone conclusion that the reason the world has gotten to the place it is is because of everything that has happened up to this point. That's some of the stuff that happened. You know, when you talk about butterfly wings no, changing I, things and stuff, I would think that if the Crusades never happened, maybe we'd all be Muslim. Maybe we'd all be, who knows? All, all you can really say for sure, you, you, you don't know what it would have been without them. I don't think there's a way to know. We can guess. But we do know what is today, and everything that led up to it is what brought us here right now. That's nice. Right. It's like the best of all possible worlds. <laughs> but yeah, that's been disproven been, because it's, it's so many before. events are fortuitous. Yeah, and you can compare <coughs> different cultures and, and see one as having superior outcomes mm -hmm. based on their practices mm -hmm. and what they do, how they treat each other and other I people. Agree. Look at uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. They're on the same frickin' island. Yeah. I don't want to diverge from our discussion. Well, no, but, but that's just, important. No, just that's to answer not really that, a... that you can study two countries you know, during the same period of time and find there's different outcomes based on their political system, their economic system, yeah. their values, everything. I mean, and you, so to say, well, it was inevitable, I mean, it, it wasn't inevitable. If you look at what was going on, say, I, I don't know, pick another, what was going on in China? Were they having the same type of wars going on? Right. Or, I don't know, but you could pick another part of the world and say, well, they weren't doing this, you know, or, you know, Europe isn't spending or wasn't spending the, the amount on defense that we do. So we so they have more social programs and we have less social programs. Right. So there's a difference in outcome. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I think it's it, not things necessary. are very fortuitous and you know, sometimes it's good and sometimes, you know, it isn't. The it, events are sometimes segues into really poor things. Outcomes. Probably World War One was a silly war. Yeah. The Thirty Years' War, that was another religious war in Europe, another silly war. Well, they weren't necessarily inevitable, but I, I guess I'm not sure that... I'm not saying that the Crusades were inevitable. They were just... It's like what is, is in part because of what was. So it, it's a wonderful thought exercise to say what if it didn't happen? Would we have a better income or... or outcome rather, or a worse one. I don't know. All well, we know for sure is what is, Yeah, is. And 
Life's but good. it's not necessarily <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think a lot of suffering, a lot of hell went on. It was, it was too much, yeah. and most of it was unnecessary. You can see that the first one was probably necessary. I mean, the, the Christians were being pushed. The West was being pushed by yeah. Islam. You didn't really go into that, Mary, uh, exactly God, what I was thought happening. I said that I, a lot. I didn't, I didn't recall <laughs> you talking about any single attack, offense, by the Muslims into Well, the you know, if I had Christian. done that, I would have, like, gone on forever because, you know... But you didn't cover it at all. You said that well, they were Well, I, I covered the fact that they were, like, you know, encroaching so much. They had taken over parts of Italy. They had taken over, you know, parts of Spain. Spain? Well, but that was... Yeah, but that was the earlier... Uh, Spain no, they were, but they were doing, they were still, they were pushing against Constantinople it, just and that's before what the I, First Crusade. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted the, the immediate oh my uh, God. period before, the few decades if before. If I had gone into those, I mean, you you have no idea how I had to, like, trim no, this. Cool, no. <laughs> but, but it is left with this, <laughs> the impression that it was that it was entirely a Christian offense, that, that this was No, not, I thought I made it very clear that it that was... That the First Crusade, oh, that's in there, the first that the First Crusade was, was taken... Because yes. one of the reasons was because of the encroachment of Islam. Yeah, of Islam. I thought I made that clear. Didn't I make? Greg, and the did pope, I make the that pope clear? The Pope was very you? upset because he thought that yeah. they were getting ready to encroach upon Rome. Yeah, I and remember. I mean, well, remember though. I mean, Alexius said that they were going to, um, you know, well, it was true. They were encroaching on Constantinople, and he turned to the West. He turned to the Pope for help. I think I, I said made that clear, that, I thought. Um, that when you talked about Pope Urban and you said what he was after was papal supremacy. Yeah. That always ra raises, it's, it's not, it's once again religion being used in, as a tool to gain power or land or sure. the things that, and, and so the Pope wasn't saying we're fighting for God. I'm papal supremacy to me means Pope becomes more powerful. Well, sure, they were trying that. Yeah. They were trying that. I mean, they were trying very hard. I mean, because you had this, I, I think I, I wrote that in the thing. You, it really wasn't a concept till the late 16th century of a separation, really, between church and state. Yes, I and I mean that point. also, I don't mean that just for Christianity. I mean that for uh, Greece and Rome and everything like that. You know, everything was like kind of together. Do. There wasn't a sense of, of separation, but there was always, probably from the caveman days, you, you know, there was the, the priest and there was the uh, ruler, and they were always, like, trying to win. Usually the secular rulers won, but the popes were strong players. And it was not an exception to have a priest king. Right. The king yeah. would be priest. Louis, whatever, yeah, yeah, he took the, he took the garb, yeah. You were a god king. Yeah, yeah, before, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before they yeah. were king, they were priests, or after they were king, they were priests. Well, Lewis took the. I think he took it. Did he? I think he stepped down and became a priest or something. I can't mm -hmm. remember. Lewis the Pious or something. <laughs> I think he became Saint Lewis. All well, come on. The Az <laughs> Aztecs are, uh, and, and Mayans, for example, the rulers were the priests also. They controlled well, some the, of them, but there were some of them. There was, they, they controlled too. the religion, and they worked together to, you know, keep the culture going, keep them going. Our contemporary ideas. I mean, when Spinoza started writing about, you know, secular government in the 17th century, that was revolutionary. I mean, you know, everybody hated him as a result. We we have this idea that there is like this separation because of the secular West, but look at the East right now. And, it's mainly theocracy. There's theocracies all over the place. The and an thing. effort to make art is a theocracy. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, boy. Back, back we're to the really crusade. Scary. Mm -hmm. well, it's Sometimes we're very close, I think. Yeah. Um, you said not following, you said following the death of Muhammad, Islam became militant. Yes. But, but well, it was during, what I meant was that they they expanded. Yeah, they expanded that militancy. Yeah, so they, Muhammad was militant. Obviously, Muhammad was yeah. very militant. Again, you leave the impression that they weren't militant until after. Well, his death. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me correct yeah. that then, right now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for the for the group. Ask yes, the people, Muhammad uh, was Mecca. extremely militant, and, and, and he waged he waged enormous war against. Yeah. That's how they made money at first. Yeah. They they so, took over the caravans. There was no counterpart in Christianity. 
where you can't say that you know Jesus raised an army or anything like that. No. Or Paul or any of the no. you know, people no. immediately following. So I want you to talk more about the, the differences between say this the Crusades, the idea of you know the Christians regaining the whole what they thought was the Holy Land, and the idea of the the wars that Islam waged to spread Islam. To go into countries that they weren't in. Well, I mean, you know, both religions are huge proselytizers, and they believe that they should prevail. Yeah. You know, their their ideas. So I don't see but, much difference. I think maybe Islam at that time was a little more um, a militant. But I don't think the Christians have, you know, been innocent. But were there any other wars of expansion of Christianity where, like, they said, "Well, we're going to go into China or India or Africa"? And well, no, they sent their missionaries and they conquered, they, they, they sent their soldiers into, into Mexico and into various places and they conquered all kinds of people and their priests came in and, you know, converted them. So the, you're speaking of the Spanish uh, oh, yes, conquest. The, the Spanish but, conquest. But again, was, was that done under the banner of the cross or was that... Ha well, yes, partly, said, the yes. The cross was carried right the in there. The cross was carried in there, yeah. And this was their duty to spread yeah. Christianity. Yeah, you, you didn't have that separation of church and state. I and understand. the Spanish rulers were highly, they were very religious, most of them. Whether so they, honestly so or whether yeah. because it was, you know, practical to do so. But some of them were a little crazy, I think, if they were, like, really religious. <laughs> so it was the cross of push or of halt. They're trying to push Christianity in, or they just got this banner so that the people behind them follow them in? There's both. There's both. You can't, you can't yeah. separate it, you know. But, yes, they did want to convert them, and, you know, they would, they, why not? I mean, you know, this was the true religion, and this was part of the government, too. I Doing mean, them a favor, saving their souls. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why they were burning heretics. The auto de faith were acts of faith. You know, you see that next month in the Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Well, I don't go into like extreme detail of torture. I think you can find that everywhere. I'm trying to go into all the aspects of it. Uh, and then I'm going to come around again too next year because I'm currently now just beginning to work on the whole concept of heresy. I just did blasphemy a little while ago. And then I'm going to do heresy. So I'm going to come around again a little bit. You're doing blasphemy and heresy? <laughs> yeah, I've done blasphemy already. Now I'm doing heresy. Yeah, yeah. The concepts are fascinating. Yeah. They're really fascinating. And I'm going back into ancient Greece and showing how blasphemy was used. I'm not confining it just to, to religious things in, in Christianity. It was pagan, too. Very, it's very fascinating. But So I hope you'll correct your, your statement. Well, I meant that after, see what I did, I guess it was taken the wrong way. What I meant was that it was after he died that they took on these expansion wars beyond, you know, their basic region. Well, he, he yeah, but that was within a hundred years of his death. Yeah. They had already expanded into Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to say, well, you know, it was only after, it was, it was during his lifetime, he, he conquered Arabia. He well, he, he wanted it, I mean, you know, to happen. I just meant that yeah. it happened after he died. I, I, it doesn't sound right. I understand okay. what you're saying. It was, it was obviously his vision. That would be a good way to say it. Okay. At least according to the, the Quran. Um, but, you know, I, I realized that, that they were threatening the Christian territories, but it, it wasn't clear in terms of Time, the timeline that you mentioned was this was this like uh, an immediate threat or was this yeah at that, it was an immediate threat at that time you they know, had conquered I, they those they were areas. in Spain they were in southern Italy uh, all of North Africa but that was old news yeah that but they had ex but, but they had they entrenched were pushing themselves further. and they were pushing further yeah. I mean, was, everybody was getting nervous. I it mean, wasn't clear to me. You were, yeah, yeah. Well, if you know, so then, if you're in Italy already, you're you're already pushing against the popes. But then, wouldn't wouldn't the Italians? It, you you described what I could only call a religious a religious army. So, wouldn't the countries in which they were neighboring wouldn't they have taken up arms in a more traditional conflict? Well, remember now, a lot of these countries were at war with each other, so, you know, there was a lot of going and backing and forthing, and a lot of times there was a lot of treachery. 
It, it, in fact, I, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have time to go into it. Yeah. The crusade, I mean, the crusaders themselves, I mean, these warlords and things that came, these nobles, they were always engaged in treachery against each other. But these, these people then weren't really tied to a state government, were they? Which ones? The, I'm speaking of the Crusaders. It, it's a very unusual war, this army. No, remember, the warlords were very strong. The nobles were very strong. They would often yeah. challenge the kings if they got together. So it's, it's a very different world than our world. Oh, yeah. You have oh, a government that raises yeah. an army. You yeah. don't say, well, I want to I raise an army. I want to go to the Holy Land. You know, nobody would take you seriously. Right. Even right. if you had the money to do so. Right. <laughs> so how, how is it that this could happen outside of the, the, the kingdoms? That would, wouldn't the kingdoms themselves feel threatened by this large army that's sitting in its borders or marching through? They just let them march through the country? Or? Well, you can see what they did in the Rhineland. They got, they got all the Jews that they possibly could. A lot of times I think that they didn't really uh, bother the people, although, you know, they, they pillaged. Remember, they would pillage the crops. They would, like, you know, probably a lot of people were starving after they went through it. They would take their corn. They would take their chickens, you know. It's very, there's nothing else like it. Whatever you, you know, say about the Crusades, I don't think there was anything else on this scale. Like it was very strange. That could compare Um, I am very ignorant about the Byzantines. Could you uh, just uh, digress a little bit and tell me more about the Byzantine <coughs> Empire? And Norm, I'm sorry, I can't tell you a whole lot. <laughs> well, but first of all, they were they were Eastern Orthodox. Yes, they were. Well, they were they were supposed they were their schism took place in eleven. Can't remember exactly. But right during the Crusades. Here. Yeah, yeah, they were. They argued. They, they there were a lot of church councils over the nature of the Trinity, and yeah. the nature of Jesus, and there was a a, a little a small wording that <laughs> that the Roman Catholic Church came up with about the Holy Ghost, and they where he emanated from, and they they split on on that. Also, the supremacy of the Pope. Yeah. <clears throat> that was a big issue. Okay, and then so. But the nature of the Trinity was like very important. But these were Greek people. These were people mm -hmm. who would be the the center would be in Greece. Well, the rulers but, especially, yeah. But they these are the descendants of uh, Alexander's. Yeah. Exploits. Okay. And remember, then uh, some of them were Roman too, because Constantine turned that into Constantinople. Well, that's where I'm confused because that was in Turkey. Yeah. But that was occupied by the Greeks. Yeah, yeah, Alexander, remember, he conquered almost the, what was the known world at the time. He conquered a lot of it. <clears throat> okay, and then so the, the... So most of the rulers from that area, the Egyptian rulers were uh, Greeks, they were Ptolemies, or if you want to call them, um, and then there was the, there were the, um, oh my God, the, in Syria, the... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can't remember. They were the people that uh, took issue against the Jews Salud when the Jews. Salutes? So the Seleucid Empire. Seleucid. Yeah, so that was that was Greek too, yeah. or Macedonian, if you want to call it that, because Macedon was a was its own kind of area. But why didn't the Muslims conquer them back then? I mean, yeah, because that was way before the that was before the Muslims. But in the 1638, you know, they expanded. So no six. Six, 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 sorry. Six, yeah, but Alexander's years. empire came before that. I understand, but but you would think that before they conquered Spain, they would have they would have conquered Turkey, being so close. Well, I think that they were fighting sometimes with the Turks and sometimes against them. Remember, they weren't an entity, so there was all this like division, and they would be fighting each other. This the, is what I I'm the, pretty sure of. The I'm no expert on this area, you know. But but the Muslims would would have been fighting with each other. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were. They yeah. you remember remember I said several times that the Christians exploited this because they did take Constantinople. <coughs> mm -hmm. Do you know when that was? You mean when they took Constantinople? They conquered Constantinople, the Turks, in fourteen fifty three. Fourteen fifty three. Yeah. So by that time. 
the majority of the, the Crusades, it was already right. dying out. Yeah. But what was the Christian response? To what? To this conquest. Uh, in response to the fall of the Greek imperial capital, a new crusade was pro proclaimed. Remember, there's all these like silly crusades. Belgrade was saved in 1456 by an unlikely crusading force gathered by John of Capistrano. As long as the Ottomans presented a danger, crusading ideas retained relevance and interest even to the 17th century when Francis Bacon dismissed them as the rendezvous of cracked brains that wore the feather in their head instead of their hat. Yet the appeal lingered. Men may have taken the cross and expected indulgences in the anti-Turkish Holy League, 1684 to 97. The end of crusading came in the drama of a failed camp, not in a drama of a failed campaign or a siege loss, but as a long dying fall, finally obliterated as kingdoms and secular powers, not churches or religion, claimed the morality as well as the control of warfare. Which is what happened in the 1917 when the Ottomans fell. <clears throat> right, right. It was really a secular sort of mm -hmm. development by that time. Yeah, war was really basically secular. But wasn't that because of the rise of the state government? Mm -hmm. the, the government? Yeah, but that's what I keep trying to tell poor Greg that it's like, you know, it was like at the end of the 16th century that, you know, you had the. The, the rise of the secular state. And the church was still very powerful. Yeah. I just keep trying to explain it, that this was the case straight through. I mean, you know, church and, and religion, I mean, you know, religion and the state were the same. They were the same in Greece, more or less. They were the same yeah. in Rome. Yeah, no, you don't have to convince me of that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That's great. Um, how did news spread you know, you tell us about what was happening uh, in the Holy Land <coughs> during the Crusades. How did all that news get back to Europe, you know, without the Internet? People, ha, uh -huh. people, people wandering back, people sending messages and getting, you know, it took a long time. It might take two months. But then... <laughs> Thank you very much. 